Hey gang, I am really excited. My good buddy Dave dropped by some fresh Wahoo last night. He just got back from a long range trip right off of Baja and caught some great Wahoos out there and asked me to create some really neat recipes. So, my favorite all time recipes are fish tacos. But today I'm going to make a fish taco with a little bit of a twist. Actually, a little bit of a roll. I'm going to make rolled fish tacos. On top of that, I'm going to make this really creamy, garlicky Mexican crema sauce and some pico de gallo. Just, just, just wait to see. Just hold on. If you guys are interested in learning how to make rolled fish tacos, my name is Yanni. This is Fisherman's Belly, the place where you're going to find all of your easy fish recipes. Here we go. All right, gang, so the first thing we're going to do is work on the Mexican crema and the pico de gallo. And in terms of the pico de gallo, the very first thing I do, is I start roasting and charring a jalapeno right on the stove top. Check this out. So I'm going to check on this periodically and just spin it, and I'm going to get it all black and just a little bit gray on the outside, and it just gives it a wonderful flavor, and it's going to add a real rustic look and taste to our pico de gallo. So let's get going on the crema. So our first step is to take a couple of garlic cloves and smash them and turn them into paste and I do that with a little bit of kosher salt. Check this out. First you gotta crush it, smash, take the paper skin off, bingo. Bingo. Now I'm going to take a pinch of kosher salt and that's going to not only salt our crema but it's also going to act as an abrasive and I'm going to take the back edge of this knife, my chef's knife here, and start to work it. And just turn it into a muddy, muddy paste. Need. And now into our pirates mixing bowl. All right, so here's a tip, you guys. So now I got garlicky fingers. I got a garlicky knife, right? So believe it or not, all I have to do is run my fingers over the knife under some running water and rub. And not only will the garlic disappear off the knife, but it'll also disappear from my fingers. Just check this out. So I'm cleaning my knife and my fingers at the same time. That's a little great tip from me to you on how to clean garlic off your fingers. Yeah, there's no garlic. It's amazing. Amazing. All right, let's get back to the crema. Two tablespoons of mayonnaise. And two tablespoons of sour cream. Now, believe it or not, you can buy Mexican crema already made. All the Mexican markets have it. But really what Mexican crema is, it's sour cream with a little bit of lime juice. So that's basically what we're going to do with a little bit of mayo. So one and two. We've got the garlic, we've got the salt, we've got the mayo and the sour cream. The last item is the lime juice. All right, so I'm gonna actually mix this first and I'm gonna taste before I add the other half of the wine. All right, because experience tells me I want my crema to be, have a certain consistency. So, I want it, I don't want it too soupy and I don't want it too watery. So let's let's mix and see where we're at. Alright, so now I'm gonna check for taste and consistency. I like that. If I add more lime juice, it's gonna be a little too watery, right? So now let's taste it. It's dead on. Dead on. Oh boy, garlicky. It's got that lime kick to it, that acidic kick to it, and it's got the creaminess from the mayo and the sour cream. It's perfect. We're done. This goes in the, oh, oh, wait a minute. I got something special to share with you guys. And that is this little gadget, okay? This is an empty ketchup squeezer. I don't know how else to characterize it. But anyway, you can buy these at Smart and Final. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my crema sauce in here, and after I make my tacos, 
and I'm gonna squirt this crema sauce and it's gonna make it look nice and professional. It's gonna make you and me both look like these experienced chefs. So go out and get a set of these. Here we go. Okay, and there you have it. I'm gonna put the lid on it. And now I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator and grab it when I need it at the end. Wow, I'm excited. All right, next step, let's get going on this pico de gallo. And I'm gonna make a special pico de gallo. I'm gonna use some fresh pineapple. And oh, by the way, remember the jalapeno? I've been turning it while you guys weren't watching. It's almost ready. So let me start dicing up my tomatoes. Now for the cilantro. By the way, if you guys want the full written recipe, go to fishermansbelly.com and go in the recipe category under tacos and ceviche. You'll find this recipe under tacos and ceviche. There we go. There's the cilantro. A half a red onion. Red onion. I'm gonna add about a half a cup to a cup of fresh diced pineapple. There's plenty of pineapple in the markets right now, so go get one. Let me go get that jalapeno, hold on. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. Look, it's black all around the outside. It's got a little bit of gray. Mmm, that is full of flavor. And by the way, the heat mellows out a little bit, but man, it adds a, a lot of flavor. I just, I always add this to my pico de gallos, as you guys already know. Ooh, look at that steam coming. Last but not least, a lime. Actually, I'm gonna juice a lime and a half. Remember that half lime that we had? I'm gonna use that. So, And some salt, pepper, and we're there. I got a lime and a half, and that should be enough. I'm gonna salt this, and a lot of the juice is gonna come out of the tomatoes, so there should be plenty of juice. Here we go. Three halves. Okay. Add a nice, healthy pinch of salt. Wow, look how beautiful that looks. Oh boy. Okay, so this goes in the refrigerator and we're on to the final steps. We're gonna get that fresh Wahoo, we're gonna heat up some tortillas, we're gonna roll them up and start frying them. Let's go. All right, gang, so I've had my fillets sitting in the refrigerator in paper towels. And why is that? Because the paper towels wick away any of the extra juices and those juices help promote bacterial growth. That's why I always keep my fillets wrapped in paper towels in the refrigerator. And if you want to learn more about bacteria and parasites and safe food handling in your kitchen, right over here I've got a great video that will teach you all about it. But that's what I always do. So let me lay these fillets down and I'm going to teach you guys a neat trick here. Throw this away. So here's my uh, corn tortilla, right? And I want my fillets to fit in this corn tortilla. As you can see, the fillets are a little too long. So I'm going to cut these fillets so that they're the exact length of the diameter of this corn tortilla. So check this out. From end to end and just a little bit right here. Oops, I'll set that aside. So that one's cut to length. And then this one is going to be cut to length here. Okay. So this is approximately just a little less than a pound of Wahoo. I weighed it out. And I'm figuring I'm going to end up with about six 
uh, roll tacos because I'll cut them into strips so that they fit in there. So I figure I'm going to end up with about six of them. So check this out. One, two, three, right? And then we'll add the extra one in here on the, on the thin sliver. And then we'll cut this one. One, two, and three. The next step is to season these with salt, and then we'll start heating up our tortillas heating up our oil and we are just one step closer. Check this out. I'm gonna use this so I don't have to put my fingers in the kosher salt for a little seasoning. I'm gonna set this in the refrigerator until I need it. Okay, it's time to warm up these tortillas, make them workable, make them pliable, and give them a little bit of color. I put them right on top of the open flame. And I put them in a tortilla warmer. There's number six. Now it's time for me to start heating up my oil because assembling, putting the uh, wahoo, putting the fish inside these tortillas is going to take lickety split. And by the way, if you don't have wahoo, any kind of fish will do. Yellowtail or tuna would be insane, believe me. Okay, so now it's time to start heating up the oil. I always use grapeseed oil. It's just a super healthy oil. If you're looking for grapeseed oil and you're having a hard time getting it, you can order it through Amazon. I've got some links down below. But I'm going to probably use about a half a cup of grapeseed oil. So I end up with maybe about a half an inch of oil off the bottom of the pan. And then as soon as this oil is hot, we're gonna drop them right in this oil. And, and I've got some little tips and tricks to show you guys how to keep the, your rolled tacos all rolled up while they're cooking. Okay, so I got a nice warmed up tortilla. I'm gonna grab a fork and I'm gonna take the fish fillet, right? And then I'm gonna roll it up just like that. And then see my rolled up edge here? I'm gonna place that bottom down right into the hot frying pan. There we go. And I'm gonna keep moving quickly. I wish you guys were here. This smells so good. Oh, not, not done yet. It's time to flip these guys over. And that's all it takes. All you have to do is just look for the coloring on these corn tortillas and then you know it's cooked perfectly. Let's go assemble these things. All right, I've got all six of them laid out in this platter and it's time to add the condiments. Here we go. Remember our white sauce? Oh boy. Look at that. Ooh. Perfect. And now our pico de gallo. Oh my goodness, look at that. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. I'm not sharing this with anybody. Oh my god, I'm gonna eat the whole thing. My name is Yanni. This is Fisherman's Belly, home of the easy fish recipes just like this one. I want to thank you guys for spending time with me today. Remember, this recipe is on my website, fishermansbelly.com. If you've got some fresh fish, especially if you've got some fresh wahoo, go ahead and make these rolled up fish tacos. You're gonna love it. We'll see you guys on the next one.